Hey guys, it's Saru, and I managed to get into the Equilibrius test for Perfect New World. It's a brand new MMORPG that's coming out on PC, console, and mobile, but this test was specifically for the PC version, so I wanted to try it out, see if it was even worth it, because I am excited for the upcoming World of Jade Dynasty. Before we get into it, I do want to say that a portion of this video, which was the character creator, I did do last week, so we're going to see if this game is worth it or not, and whether you guys should be hyped up for it or not. Regardless, it's a brand new MMO, and, you know, we don't get a lot of those these days. So, let's get right into it. Perfect World Games isn't usually a company that I'd normally have supported in the past, but with the impending release of World of Jade Dynasty, I figured seeing what this other prospect, Perfect New World, had to offer would be worth it or not or at the very least give me some expectations for the upcoming game. Now if you're unsure what this game even is, Perfect New World is an upcoming boundless world action MMORPG where you become a soul tamer in search for the reincarnated prime. Keep in mind that Perfect New World is not really, if at all, a sequel to Perfect World and it's in fact a complete spin-off. The game does seem to offer a heavy dash of both PvE and PvP, similar in the sense of Black Desert I guess, but with dungeons and raids and the like, along with three classes, action combat, and three races. The worrying thing or cool thing I guess, depends how you look at it, about Perfect New World is that it offers no loading screens apparently. However, as much as this game uses this marketing tactic, the last game to do that and pretty much market itself as a seamless world was Revelation Online and well, we all know how that went. Still, the game seems interesting at the very least, and the combat does seem fun, at least from the gameplay videos. I did find the initial loading screen and everything to be rather nice and pretty, and somehow reminiscent a little bit to Arcage's server select screen. Or maybe I'm just a little bit off my rocker, but it's been a while since I actually played that game, but it kind of feels similar to something. Still, I mean, you can't reinvent the wheel at this point with selection screens, and I didn't find it offensive or anything, I just felt familiar. So I looked at the classes and they looked pretty nice from the get-go. The Gale Blade was very beautiful while the Berserker was ferocious. The Mystic Sword seemed okay and the Dragon Spear seemed to look nice. Not much information beyond what was on the screen was presented, but I did come out to find out that the classes were indeed gender locked. Now in this day and age it's a little strange, but I decided to take a look at the Gale Blade and she seemed to have a pretty nice look, but I was overall pretty impressed by the graphic fidelity and the character customization. It wasn't incredibly in depth as we see nowadays, but it it was in-depth enough to offer something unique, I guess. I played around with the customization, and for those wondering, there is indeed a booty and booba slider. These are important when being yelled at by raid leaders about how you didn't do a mechanic right and die by not getting healed. All you have to do is flaunt your body and persuade them that the fault was of the healers for not healing you through the mechanic like it's meant to be. Overall, I found the customization for the Gale Blade to be very nice, whereas in the Mystic Sword, I found it to be dull and pretty bad. The options offered were pretty terrible, to be honest, and somehow any customization that I saved on the Gale Blade could not be given to the Mystic Sword, but could be given to the Dragon Spear for some reason. I'm not even sure what that means on a philosophical level. The Dragon Spear offered better customization, not great, but better than what the Mystic Sword offered. Still, I think the resources for making characters went more towards the female classes in this case. In the end, I did find it cool that you could export your character and import it down the line so you didn't have to remake your character, but that's become such a common thing these days that it's not really as impressive as it once was. Overall, the performance in the character select screen seemed nice, and I'm still weirded out by the decision to use Unity as a game engine. Mind you, at this point, it will all come down to netcode and the like. I think with an MMO, if it's more server-sided, that will be okay, as long as it doesn't regular a lot on the game engine, and usually they don't, but in the past they used to, especially with Unreal Engine 3 MMOs. But sure, some people will say games like Crowfall, Albion Online, Fractured Online, and the upcoming Pantheon Rise of the Fallen are made in Unity, though, disregarding the latter, the rest really haven't done so hot, at least performance-wise. And sure, people will randomly bring up Genshin Impact, as if it's an MMORPG, but let's keep in mind we're not talking about an actual MMORPG here. Perfect New World, for example, is apparently seamless, or rather boundless, and you have no loading screens whatsoever, and somehow recommends using an RTX 3060 as a graphics card. But I don't know, I mean, we'll see. So finally jumping into the game, I immediately noticed with the voiceover work that it was atrocious. Basically, I can't have any nice words for it, it was just terrible. And this was mostly because I couldn't tell whether this was AI or not, but it was just dead. No emotion whatsoever, and I thought it might just be the narrator at this point, but I was very wrong. So when you start out the game after the cutscene, you basically are going to the Sky Tier, and at this point you're kind of traveling through the Blizzard, so you can talk to the Prime, and so on and so forth, and I immediately started to see some optimization issues. That usually happens with the beta, let's be real. I mean, 
mean, I know. And so I'm trying not to put optimization as a big bad thing when it comes to a beta or equilibrious test or whatever you want to call this. And ultimately the game is not out yet. So this is not the final quality or anything. Still, I was seeing a lot of complaints from a lot of people that had 4090s, 4080s, 4070 Ti's, 3070 Ti's, me with a 3070, people with 3060s that is the recommended GPU, all going from 90 to 99% usage. So that aside, I got more into it, and we got to learn a little bit about Suche, whose voice was also bad. Pretty bad. I, I mean, you could just hear this, for example. You seem to have fully recovered now. Come over here. I am Sucha, Sky Tears Prime of Sorrow. This is a mind space I manifested using my own spirit powers. Even though everything was really pretty, at this very start of the game, I felt like things would start to diminish soon after, and I was not wrong. This particular training section, it did look really nice. Graphically, it was really pretty, and a lot of the particles and everything was really nice, but I felt like there was a lot of things that could have been done better because, again, I just could not get immersed into it because just frames were dropping everywhere. Eventually, I did start playing with the settings in hopes that, you know, I would maybe play the game more smoothly, but nothing really helped. And then once you finish that thing, you get another cutscene where you kind of meet the other primes and it was not pretty again with the voice acting. It was, I don't know what it was, but it was terrible. So who shall this young one replace? So once you enter the mind space, this is where I started to see a lot of the frame issues happen, which again, I'm all alone at this point. There are no players around me, so I can only imagine how things would be. And a lot of these particle effects and stuff don't usually affect me when I'm playing other bigger games. But again, I understand about the optimization and usually I would not point out any optimization issues when it came to a beta or an alpha. But at this point, I don't think there was any optimization to begin with. So I don't know what to tell you. Came to the point where the cutscenes were even dropping frames and I might have to restart the game. I did notice with the sound when you're fighting Shadow Suche, it got a little crazy when she used some abilities that would pretty much blow out your eardrums. For example, when she uses this ability and everything explodes, it gets a little loud, but when she uses other abilities such as this ice thing that she does, she puts ice on the ground and then she explodes it and this is how it sounds like. So anyway, after Sky Tier, you see some random ass white ape. Again, I'm not really seeing a lot of players and I think this is just kind of the intro into things, but I did notice the transition into the combat when you're fighting the white ape or rather approaching it and then you're going into the cutscene and then your hair randomly turning to a different color. Things were not really that smooth. Combat wise, it felt strange, at least for this particular class, which was the Mystic Sword, but I think that was just because I wasn't really getting into it. Down in Sky Tier Ruins, I noticed there's a brand new thing called the system. So this is basically like a feature preview page that you kind of go in, and if you did this, let's call them little quests or missions, you would get, I guess, rewards. I did find it funny though, that if you go to the skins thing, the music changes completely, as if a Walmart version of Enigma's Sadness. I don't know if anyone's heard that. This is what the game sounds like. Now, try to compare it with this song. I'm just saying, like, I don't know, that's what I heard, that's what I felt the moment I heard it, but I mean, I could be completely off. I did see that there was a camera mode. It was a little wonky, and I did wish there were a little more filters or things that you could do with it, but this is something that could be added down the line, which is totally fine. But I know there is a lot of screenshot junkies out there that really do like this type of thing, so, you know, this is a system that does exist. Now, one thing that I had learned very early on, because you kind of learn immediately once you get into the game after the intro of the logo for Perfect New World, was these particular, I guess, they look like boots on the ground and you will see these in dungeons you will see these around the world when you're doing certain things and it's basically for you to run faster or even jump higher i think 
it's absolutely dumb. But the movement system on its own, like the default movement is terrible. Now, apart from that, when you hear certain NPCs and you're trying to get into this, like, yo, I'm gonna fight that white ape, and you hear this. The white ape's gone berserk! The white ape's gone berserk! Along with this Hermione looking character. You don't really feel that immersed. Again, these are voice actors that could be changed, but I doubt that it will have any big change. The music itself for combat did not change throughout the rest of the game. It all was pretty much repetitive. I did like the fact that you can kind of tame spirit beasts so you can use their abilities in one way or another. Down the line, you could use one of the spirit beasts to kind of grapple or if you needed to kind of jump on over or do something or even stop time, you could. Eventually, I did make it to the fishing village which is not a great name in my opinion, but I guess it's generic enough to kind of fit the whole style of what I've been playing. But at this point, you kind of learn kind of the basics and I did see a lot of players around me and it wasn't really affecting my FPS, at least not any different than what everything else was. I did see the spirit beast that you can get. So I got the fire lion and the thunder raptor and I was curious where you get these from and I couldn't not see the cash shop because, well, this beta doesn't really include it whatsoever. But I did notice down the line something about the cash shop that I wasn't really happy about, but I will talk about it very soon. So when you get to Mechanopolis, this was kind of cool because I found the ambience and everything to be really nice. And again, it's not like the graphics were terrible. They were pretty nice. It's just like, it wasn't, I don't know, it wasn't great. And I saw a lot of players saying, oh, this is just like BDO and I, I don't know how. And this is kind of where I was just like, what am I playing? So you go into Mechanopolis, you open everything, and you see this big dragon thing. And then this is what you hear. Come hither, those who have been blessed by the Radiance. This is the entrance to Mechanopolis. Wherein lies the ancient malice of the prime. If the ancient malice ever becomes unshackled, the Wraith King will arise. Why he sounds like an old man, I have no idea. But you go into Mechanopolis and you start doing this puzzle. And this is basically just, again, a little training exercise. Like, that's all it is. So with the Spirit Beast, I did find out that you can level them up. And you'll get a lot of these items to level them up just throughout the game. Either through exploration, quest, rewards, or whatever, honestly. Even random treasure chests that you find around the map. They usually will drop something. An essence of lightning, or fire, or water, or whatever. And you use these to level up the Spirit Beast which can make them stronger. I did appreciate that the pets in the game all pretty much have similar abilities, so I did like that. I liked the Corgi, I thought it was really cute. You can even set up the pickup settings to be, let's say, specific rares, or if you even want it to, auto loot and it doesn't exhaust the pet or anything. One of the things I did notice is something called the mechanical world. What this does is that it'll give you treasure chests full of either XP or whatever based on things that you do, like explore or unlock certain things or kill certain monsters or do certain activities. Now there is a talent tree that can be freely changed. Certain talents will give you different builds. So let's say you want to build your mystic swordman to be a great swordsman, which I guess it's its own like name. You can do so by using the recommended slots for the talents. The skill tree, however, is not that interactive, I guess. You just basically get what you get. I did find fighting some of the bosses in the open world to be pretty fun, and some of them were really challenging, I found. Um, this was mostly around level 19 or so, but even the ones early on at level 9, level 10, I think it was pretty cool but it just felt like a weird version of Forspoken. I don't know why, but I guess maybe it was just because of my character, but the combat system, at least with Mystic Sword, felt like that. And even fighting this monster, the Nether Alpha Beast, around this time when I'm fighting it, I'm going to be in a cutscene and things just get really weird for a moment. And you can see, for some reason, the cutscene is inside. I don't know, you could see this for yourself. <laughs> That was 
was brave of you, but foolhardiness won't work. I'll show you how it's done. Brawn and brains. Awesome. So I don't know what happened there for a second. Apart from Z Ying's terrible voice acting as well, it just got weird. I did like that there was fast travel, but for a game that claims that there's no loading screen, there is a loading screen when you use fast travel, so I'm just gonna put that out there. Fighting one of the world bosses like this goof or goof, I don't know, Aerox Chief with a lot of the other players was actually pretty smooth, honestly. I I feel like maybe it's just the fact that there's a lot of monsters that causes frame drops, but just this one, for example, with other players was not really a lot of frame drop issues. I don't know. Could have just been the area itself, but it was pretty okay. Eventually you go into the sanctuary and you start to learn how to fish. I found fishing to be a terrible experience and not because it's not fun or anything, it's just not interactive or anything. If you've played games like Blade and Soul, Swords of Legends Online, even Black Desert when it's AFK fishing, or even Palia. A lot of those fishing systems are pretty fun because they're interactive and you can just kind of play. This wasn't. You just put your rod down and then you just wait for it to say pull up. Another system that this game has for gear is if you have a lot of gear or items that you don't need, you can dissolve them and get a chance at getting flawless stones. What these do exactly, I have no idea because I didn't actually use them and I didn't really care to use them. But gearing is fairly easy. You get gear from dungeons, you get gear from open world bosses and even as a chance from some stores in game even though you can't level up your stats a lot like previous mmos where you kind of put stuff into dexterity or whatever in this game it's kind of all done for you it's also based on the gear you have so that's kind of adjusting the stats for you but i don't know it felt kind of lazy in a way now i did notice a lot of unity assets and this water specifically for the game is actually called river auto material and i thought maybe i was wrong but i actually checked the files because it is a unity game so a lot of the files are pretty easy to access in the game unfortunately and yeah there's even the logo for the river auto material it's not to say you have to build the whole river yourself it just means that a lot of the assets that were already created by other people and just bought and put into the game rather than kind of making a lot of the things yourself you start to wonder what exactly was added that were assets and what wasn't an asset when i got to level 15 i started fighting the two-headed dragon and actually i got a little bit of nostalgia because this boss actually reminded me of one in uh swords of legends online which was called i actually don't remember what it's called but it was actually like fire and poison so it was just a similar feeling but anyways that aside it wasn't really all that scary i mean i thought being in this weird fiery place things were going to be kind of crazy with the mechanics but Nah. But again, maybe this is just because of the story and you're just kind of doing a challenge, but it wasn't really all that crazy to me. Eradicate all evil. Thou shalt remain diligent and not betray the path of spirit mastery. What the fuck is you what talking the about? Fuck was that? So around level 18, I got a new system that was given to me, which was called the enhancement system. So this actually allows you to enhance certain things like your weapon. So as you can see, I can plus one it. If you've played other games like Black Desert or Terra, you know about plusing. So this was my blue steel weapon. And luckily there wasn't a system where if I'm at plus one or plus two, if I fail, it goes back to plus one. But there is a chance that if I'm at plus one and there's two attempts, for example, and if I fail one of them, it'll just revert it which as you can see, that's basically what happened. However, I did get lucky at some point because I had a plus three and if I failed, I would go back to plus two apparently, although I don't think that's actually true. But I managed to get it to plus four without any issues. And then my godly ring to plus three. So that was pretty nice. But honestly, I detest this system. I hate enhancement success rates. After previous games with Korean MMOs, I just got exhausted from it. So I just don't like it. That aside, what I did find really funny is in this specific quest called Assist Modi, you could literally just sit in the water and then the NPCs will eventually fight these mobs. Around level 19, you kind of become a Gundam character for some weird reason and start fighting mechanical guards, but it doesn't really last very long. But I thought it was a cool little system, but it reminded me of kind of every Korean MMO I've ever played, usually, for some weird reason, you end up being either a monster or a machine or a robot or something and end up killing things. <laughs> 
I don't know why. So Indricopolis, I got into the palace square and I thought it was actually really pretty here. I really enjoyed the overall vibrant feeling of it. And honestly, I was really kind of impressed because I see a lot of conversation about the fact that, oh, why not use Unreal Engine 5? Why use Unity? And usually it doesn't really matter if it's done well, but I was just really surprised to see a Unity MMORPG to begin with because you don't really see him. Now one thing I found really funny is when you get into the Spirit Temple, you actually got to talk to this Ink Cube. And by the way, if the developers are watching this, when you get into this and there is like an announcement, this is basically what happens and it looks horrible. And also this is what the cutscene sounds like. It's terrible. It starts out okay and then Sushi transforms and this is what it looks like after losing frames for some reason. I like to think that she was speaking really low because she was so far we're like, excuse me, what did you say? But that aside, just the banner of like login from whatever time to whatever time while you're in this like epic scene or whatever was just hilarious to me. It, it just kind of showed what the game has been at this point for the last like 20 levels. I will say some of the voice acting for Sushi when she's a fallen prime was okay. And I think it fit her in this kind of kind of like emotionless state and it kind of worked, but her normal self did not have a very good voice. Now after destroying the Wraith King and whatever, there's this scene where everything explodes and I don't know why, this particular scene right here reminded me of Justice League when the Flash basically does this particular move and he's about to like run. So you can see it like this. And then this. I mean, that's what I got. That's the vibe I got. So at this point, I was trying to get to level 21 and that was going to be my goal because I didn't want to grind this test whatsoever. I didn't want to grind to begin with. But this is where I was like, oh. I see. So now that I'm level 19, I could see something called the pass. So when I click on this, this is basically a battle pass that you can buy. You usually got the free one, which says free, and then advance, which you got to pay for. But this is where it was really interesting. So you got the quest, and these will pretty much fill up the battle pass as things normally do. But then I started seeing spirit beasts. But I figured, well, maybe it's from somewhere. It says event shop pass. Okay, so only from those. In the paid version, you can get a level 30 exquisite weapon. Now, weapons can be leveled up and they can continue to be enhanced, so I didn't really know what to make of it. It also said that the weapon would be corresponding to your profession, which I know they meant profession. You know, I, I get typos. I make them. And enjoy exclusive weaponed abilities. Not sure what that means, but if anything is really kind of like giving me vibes about pay to win, which we already knew, like very likely, let's, let's be honest, very likely that's what was going to happen. It would be this. Now the shop itself is closed. It just says features not available yet, but you can kind of see it from everywhere else. And here's where I'm worried with this is because there is PVP. So I don't really know how this would affect it because you also have your spirit beast. You can get a lot of cool things from those spirit beasts. So I don't know, but I decided to push on and I went to my first dungeon, which was the Lost Temple, and I thought it was kind of fun. I mean, it was a solo dungeon, so I didn't have anybody to do it with, but there was a quest that I had to do it myself, and I would get like 52,000 XP, and I was like, oh, well, I actually need that XP so I can get to level 21 faster, so that's what I did. I will admit it was uh, kind of fun to do the dungeon. I hated a lot of the interactions, thought the jump thing was okay, but it was just certain things like the boost, like I said, for running and jumping that I just didn't like it whatsoever. I just felt like this is kind of a default thing that we should be getting anyways. I think that would make it a lot more fun and fluid. The final boss was pretty fun. I didn't really understand the mechanics because I did see certain towers just standing there and I don't know if there was maybe an achievement or something to maybe kill him without destroying that. But regardless, I didn't just see it. I tried to destroy them because I saw that they could be destroyed by him, but it was all right. And I was actually wrong. It was 55K experience and I beat it and it was all right. And eventually I got to level 21 pretty quick by doing one of the events and I 
made my guild, which a lot of words were censored. In this game, everything is censored for some reason. I try to make We The People because that's the little community I have, or People Power, or People Squad, or anything, and I just couldn't. Even the word censored was censored. So the word censor with an E, as if that's a word, just managed to get it in. And that's what I did. It cost 50k to create the guild, and you get your own little guild island, I guess, which looks okay. It's not too bad, I guess. You can do certain things in this map with your guild base, with different guild members to do different activities, but I don't know. I mean, after playing the game, I just wasn't feeling it, to be honest, and I went into the game with an open mind. I pushed on even with the horrible frames at the beginning, even with the absolute just nightmare of voice acting and other things, but overall, I don't think this is a game for me. I am really excited for World of J Dynasty, however, and I will cover it very soon, and I have a lot of information thanks to Tora, who has been collecting endless information about World of J Dynasty on my Discord, which you can join in the description below, but overall Perfect New World, uh, at least in the state that it's in, I'm good. <laughs> I'm gonna give it a pass, but overall, I, I don't know how I feel. The combat is okay, it's not great. The graphics are all right. For a Unity game, I've never really seen this type of fidelity, so you know, kudos to you for sure. But overall, I just wasn't all that impressed. So I don't know. On to the next one, I guess. There's other MMOs coming out very soon and I hope to cover them, but let me know what you guys think, if you guys are even gonna try this game. Again, there are apparent plans for it to be coming out on PC, mobile, and consoles. I don't know if there's gonna be crossplay, but the overall structure for mobile is definitely there. It's just not for me. All right guys, thanks for watching.